This is the 2013 Fuquay Varina Mayoral Candidates Forum, presented by the Fuquay Varina Chamber of Commerce, with coverage provided by the North Carolina Center for Voter Education. Moderating the forum is Tommy Broadwell, Executive Director of the Fuquay Varina Chamber of Commerce. The candidates for mayor this year are John Byrne and Beth Castles. Okay, I'm John Byrne. I'm the mayor here in Fuquay. I've been the mayor for uh, 12 years. Um, I've tried to focus on things that make a difference to the quality of life uh, here in Fuquay, Verena. And a lot of those things have to do with revitalization, uh, preparing our town for the future with our water and sewer. Uh, Judd Parkway, trying to get Judd Parkway all around, th all around town. Those are things that, that we can do. And um, we've started that process. And it's very exciting to see those things starting to, to come together. Um, you know, in starting some of the programs, it took a while for them to just kind of build and the synergy um, that we see today. But it's very important that those projects are continued and um, we allow our town to be all it can be. Thank you. Yeah. I am uh, Beth Castles, for those of you who don't know me. Um, I was born and raised in central Illinois. The weather is a lot better here, I can promise you. Um, I am a United States Army veteran. I am a mother. I am an IT professional, and I have been a resident of Fuquay Verena for about 16 years now. Of course, when I moved here, it was less than 7,000 residents in the town, and now it's grown to 18,000 and change, and our numbers are expected to grow beyond 40,000 people within the next 20 years, which is significant. And I want to make sure that we are absolutely prepared for the growth that we are about to enjoy here in this community. Oh, thank you. That, that was quick. Okay. By the way, I, we uh, solicited these questions from the public, uh, as, as many people as I could contact, and uh, so here's an interesting one. <laughs> and Beth, you go first, okay? <laughs> the lack of concrete barriers in the parking spaces at the post office has created a very hazardous situation for patrons <laughs> due to cars cutting through the parking area. What can the mayor do to help mitigate the potentially dangerous situation? Wow. Um, well, having utilized the Fuquay Verena Post Office quite frequently, I can honestly say that I do recognize that concern. Um, definitely not the question I expected to be asked first tonight, but that's, that's okay because it, it, it's a concern, right? A citizen raised an issue and we need to address it. And so, um, I mean, first and foremost, I, I think we would probably sit down and explore the possibility of putting concrete barriers in there so that people don't go barreling through that parking lot. Um, the interesting question I would have to ask is, being a federal facility, since it's the United States Post Office, do we as uh, the town even have authority to put concrete barriers there in the parking lot of the post office? So. Certainly we could advocate on behalf of the citizens if, if that's uh, indeed a concern. Um, but that's something that I would definitely have to explore a little further, but I think it would certainly be a viable option for the safety of our citizens. You know, I'd, I'd just go over there and talk to the postmaster and ask him to um, see what he could do to get the barriers. It's most likely gonna be a budgetary type issue uh, for them, but, um, um, that's what I would do. If, if that's what some citizen wants the mayor to do, Tommy, uh, that'll be done tomorrow. You have an action item list that we're starting here now. We're trying. <laughs> Second question. How do you feel currently about the town's relationship with small business owners? Can it be improved, and if so, how? I think the town has a good relationship with small business owners. Um, uh, I think it should always be improved. You should always look to do better things. 
Uh, customer service is one thing that I've really strived for. Uh, when you're a leader, you do it yourself. If you pick paper up walking up and down the street, people see it. Um, then you will have other people uh, picking up paper, whether it's the commissioners, um, whether it's the young girl that we, um, we read about in the paper encouraging people to pick up cigarette butts. Um, it's the example that you set. And that example, the example that you set translates over into many, many good things happening. Um, you try to be open and honest with your decisions out front, and uh, good things will happen. And I just encourage that with all town employees. One of the things that I've done um, specifically is ask that our town employees all have their shirts with their names on them. Um, and they, they have that now. So if somebody is doing something wrong and they tell the mayor about it, I want to know who it was. <laughs> Not that just somebody was doing something wrong. So we can try to get better. And I found out that our town employees, what do they want? They want to get better. They're trying, they're, we're, we're going to school, we're educating them in a lot of different areas. Um, we've had probably more people go through the School of Government in Chapel Hill uh, than any other town in Wake County. Um, and we'll still continue to encourage that. I want to echo the mayor's sentiment about, you know, especially around customer service and setting the example, which is important, right? It's just like we tell our children, you practice what you preach. And um, driving exceptional customer service. And there are a lot of ways in which we can do that. And a lot of ways we can seek feedback from the local businesses because there are, there's always room for improvement. And so you have to seek that feedback and seek the, the criticism, constructive, um, and do what you can to improve. One of the suggestions has been um, a customer service survey. And I know that the town has recently put a customer service survey on the website, which I think is a great first step. You know, I would take that a step further and make sure that that customer service survey is assigned to someone and that there are items on there that are actionable. But even beyond that, when new businesses, small businesses come into Fuqua Varina, at the end of the process, obviously they're issued a certificate of occupancy. How about doing a customer service survey then as well and understand how was your experience in dealing with the town? How was your experience um, in opening your business? What could we have done better? What are the things we did really well? Because again, you have to seek that feedback and there is always room for improvement in any situation. Uh, John, you're up. It's a long question, so listen carefully. You want me to do this one? I, I did the other one first. Oh, I don't know, I'm but sorry. I'll do whichever way you want to do it. Let Beth do it first. Okay. Oh, that's yeah, right. I, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. I get the doozies first. I'm glad to do it, but I just want to make sure you want to play the same rules. Okay. <laughs> Y'all have to keep me straight. Fuquay Varina's population is expected to exceed 30,000 by 2015. It's dance studios, the high school band, chorus, the drama programs outgrew the school's auditorium years ago, as well as the Chamber of Commerce banquet. Seniors in our community represent 20% of the population, yet do not have a place to meet or access resources. Do you see this growth as an opportunity to build a conference and cultural center that can house the needs of all these groups? If not, how would you address these needs? Well, first and foremost, I'd, I'll address the, the senior citizens. Um, it's a great question. So my grandmother actually lives here in Fiqua Varina. She's a very active senior. She does a lot of activities through the Fiqua Varina Community Center, but she's also shared her concerns and her friends have shared some concerns as well that there aren't quite enough activities here in Fiqua Varina. She actually spends a fair amount of her time in Apex because they have a very mature program for senior citizens. So that is something that I would like to explore a little further and find ways that we can enhance the programs that we have here for senior citizens. Obviously, I want to keep them here in town. I would rather them not have to go to you know, surrounding communities to, to uh, participate in activities. Um, beyond that, there was a readout last week for the Cultural Arts Center here in Fiqua Varina. 
and there was some interesting information presented there. Um, it seems that the feasibility, uh, the feasibility study seemed to indicate that the community is not quite prepared for a cultural arts center. It would be nice, I think, at this point to start finding ways within the community that we can prepare for a cultural arts center because it is a viable option for our community. And they indicated that an 800 seat um, space in this area of the county is something that's untapped. And so we have a prime opportunity there to really vet that more fully, start marketing, start getting people to come to the table willing to invest in a cultural arts center, and I think really drive the message that this is what our citizens have requested and what can we do to make that a reality for our citizens. I think a, a cultural arts center um, and convention center, uh, as we talk about it, it certainly has a place in our community and it's something we need to plan for. Um, my father told me once that life is full of a lot of choices and what we have to do is make a clear choice on what our wants and what our needs are. Um, the Cultural Arts Center uh, is an area that is um, uh, very important to a large number of citizens here and our town is expanding and growing. And as we continue to expand and grow, I would expect it would become more and more important. And there's a couple ways to approach it. Um, you can approach it through bond issues. You can approach it through um, uh, fundraising. Um, I think it's going to take a combination of those things and a vision uh, for the future that this is one of the most important things to all of our citizens uh, that we want. And we need to put focus on it, move it into our five-year plan, and have it where uh, we're building the base. We're starting those programs um, in our cultural arts program that we have now. Um, so when it comes time for such a center uh, to be, we already have the programs in line. We're moving the ball forward. You're not just starting up something that's going to cost you a couple hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a year uh, in new revenue. Uh, I think that that is really a part of the, the puzzle to have it where it grows into the future. You have to be concerned that you don't put businesses out of business, much like Stars Theater here, um, you know, when you do things like this. So it's a, it's a major concern to our town board. Thank you. Do you, do you know a better way to get DOT's attention when it comes to speed limits, signal lights, and our local road issues? We hear a lot about, a lot, that DOT is the problem. But is there a way to have a stronger relationship with DOT in our future? Uh, Tommy, I sit on the Campo board, um, you know, for our region. Um, and... Um, we try to stay really close in touch with, uh, with DOT. Wally Bowman is our um, um, division uh, representative, and I probably talk to him once a week. Now, if it's just about complaining and just about saying this, what DOT does is they put um, numbers together, and the numbers have to make sense, whether it's turning signals, um, whether it's, um, you know, the traffic lights. Um, those are all things that are monitored very closely. And when the numbers reach the level, they make the change. Um, it's not necessarily about um, us fussing loud enough and getting them to, to do something. They do their job. And um, I appreciate the way they, they go about it. Um, many times it's not exactly what I want, but it's the right thing uh, for our community as we compete in these projects with other areas of, uh, of North Carolina and diminishing uh, tax revenue. You know, we all don't want to pay any more taxes, 
Um, you think about your cars today. Um, your cars are getting much further mileage. Um, the cars are starting to get 30 and 40 you know, miles to the gallon. Some people have hybrids and have uh, battery cars. Um, so the revenue from DOT is coming in probably at half of what it once was. DOT hasn't raised the taxes uh, on, the, um, on the gas, so you're taking in less. So those are things you have to take into consideration. It's an interesting question because one of the um, issues that have, has been raised to me repeatedly by citizens, and there are actually some of those citizens sitting in this very room tonight that have concerns about the intersection of Wilbon Road and Highway 55. And there are peak traffic times where it has a tendency, especially if you're on Wilbon Road trying to make a left-hand turn onto Highway 55, that there's no turn arrow and it backs up. There is a left-hand turn lane, but there's no turn arrow. And so it backs up. And I have sit through that quite often in the mornings uh, taking my girls to school, but it backs up pretty significantly. They're well past Bridge Street. And yesterday, in fact, I sat there through three iterations of the light before I was able to make a left-hand turn, which resulted in me sitting there nearly 10 minutes. So while I recognize that um, you know, we can't be the habitual complainers, I think that we can advocate on behalf of our citizens and hopefully raise awareness about intersections such as that or intersections that may not be so safe. Um, my mother came from Raleigh tonight to sit with my girls so I could be here this evening and she called me and it took her 30 minutes to get across Fuquay Verena at 545 this evening. And so again I recognize that um, we have to go av about it very methodically it's still something that's incredibly important to our citizens, and we need to find a way to lend some structure to um, our asks of the Department of Transportation, prioritize them, and sit down and say, what is it that we need to do to make these improvements in our community and ease those traffic concerns? Tommy, let me make one statement about that light there, if I can. Uh, I'm, I'm actually the person that got that light put there. Um, and we got it put in the tail end of, um, um, or excuse me, the front end of the road being widened when 55 was widened. I went to DOT and asked them to, uh, to put it in. Now, any of these things that we have a concern about a particular um, light, um, make sure that you do email us uh, at the town or email it to me, and I'll make sure those concerns are related um, to DOT. Um, we try to do a good job at that at the town all the time. Thank you. Oh, did, no, I answered that one. No, you answer that one first. Okay. This is confusing with only two of us. <laughs> I don't know if I might have this one or not. <laughs> well, then here you go next, <laughs> Mr. Mayor. <laughs> okay. How do you feel about the building of most homes on postage stamp sized lots? And would you support a move toward larger lots, large conservation easements, and more greenways inside town limits to allow more open space for residents? Did Mike Sorensen submit that question? <laughs> I think not. Uh, um, you want me to read it again? No, 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 I, I got it. I got the gist of it. Um, it's interesting because in, in the conversations that I've had in the last few weeks with some of the local citizens, there have been concerns that there is a lot of residential growth in Fuquay Verena, and there's not a lot of industrial growth right now. And so obviously with the residential growth and lots that size that we're speaking about here specifically, the residents are significantly greater. Um, one of the things that I enjoyed moving to Fuquay Verena 16 years ago was that you know, there was an opportunity to get a lot of acreage, if you will, with, with your land. Um, the lot I live on is an acre and a half, and I, you know, it's nice that, you know, we have some space. But, you know, I also recognize that there's, there's significant growth here. 
Do we need to look at the balance between residential and industrial growth? I absolutely think we do. Um, one of the things that people have said to me repeatedly is they love the look and feel of Fuquay Varina. They do love that we have a lot of trees in Fuquay Varina, that we do um, a great deal of landscaping, that there is a lot of greenery here, and it's, it's, it's appealing. It's, it's home, right? And it's home for everybody here in this room, and it's, um, you know, I think that's incredibly important, so we probably do need to take a look at the number of residential builders, if you will, that are occupying very small spaces um, and contributing to our significant residential growth here because it goes back to the traffic concerns. It's creating significant traffic concerns. It's our infrastructure, I think, probably needs to be revisited in order to accommodate all of that growth. So it's the balance between residential and industrial that we really need to sit down and look at very significantly. Thank you. Um, Tommy, repeat that question again. I want to make sure I get it. It's a long out. one. How do you feel about the building of most homes on postage stamp lots, sized lots, and would you support a move toward larger lots, large conservation easements, and more greenways inside town limits to allow more open space for residents? Okay, there's a direct correlation between smaller lots and open space. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the town's ordinances, but if you have a, um, a partner, and I consider uh, the home builders, the developers, our partners, because they help our town grow, they pay additional taxes into our community, and they allow our tax rates to remain low. Um, the development ordinance, they have an opportunity to choose between smaller lots and more open space. So typically, if somebody chose smaller lots, then they would have to keep 25% open space within that subdivision. Now, that's been the policy of the town for a good number of years. The good thing about that open space is that it's for everybody. It's not for one person, but the open space is for everybody. And that's what the town has chose to do, is to help provide open space. Now, we think about the greenways, the sidewalks, and those sort of things. Um, this past year, uh, our town, or I say this year, 2013, 2012, uh, we received about mm, close to a million dollars in grants to build sidewalks. Uh, we have built about two, two and a half miles worth of sidewalks uh, in Fuquay Varina. And we're excited about that. Um, we had a sidewalk uh, issue, a bond issue to help build sidewalks. We worked hard to leverage uh, our grant money uh, to be able to build more. So we're now tying our, through our sidewalks, tying, tying our open space or our downtown areas uh, into a very walkable community. And the quality of life that we're adding to the community is huge. That's one of my yeah. uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to do a little short one and give you one minute each, okay? Just to let my timer know. What do you think is Fuqua Verena's single greatest asset and why? There's no question in my mind about that. It's its people um, and where we're located. I, I tell everyone that Fuqua Verena is located in the heart of North Carolina um, and how we relate to our people, how we communicate. We've tried very hard to upgrade our website um, to be able to use the, the Wi-Fi in our downtown areas to promote the mom and pop businesses along the main streets, uh, to do things that are very um, user friendly uh, in our downtown corridors and areas. And I think you'll notice in Fuquay Verena, many of our downtown areas are flourishing. Uh, we're kind of excited about that, and I think our town board pays close attention to it. Uh, I appreciate very much our uh, town board's 
commitment and interest um, in our downtown uh, corridors uh, and areas because as you look at those so you look at your community and how your community is going to uh, survive in the future. I want to echo the mayor's sentiments there and I ex expand on it a little bit further. I, I agree wholeheartedly that the citizens are our greatest asset here in Peak Wave Arena. It's that sense of community that we have here. Um, and I also want to applaud Mayor Byrne because he has been an incredible ambassador for Peak Wave Arena. And he's one of the reasons that we have the sense of community here. So um, thank you for your service to the, the town of Fequay Verena. Um, it's, I mean, it's incredible. It's, again, it's, I, I call it home. I like that when I walk downtown in Fequay Verena, I don't pass through the streets without someone speaking to me and saying hello. And I will tell you that um, having entered the political fold here in the community, I have been overwhelmed at the support that I have received at the information that people have been willing to share with me and again that incredible sense of community we have here and I, I do I feel that is absolutely our greatest asset thank you both let's give them a hand This has been the 2013 Fuquay Verena Mayoral Candidates Forum, presented by the Fuquay Verena Chamber of Commerce, with coverage provided by the North Carolina Center for Voter Education. Election Day is Tuesday, November 5th. To learn more about these and other candidates, please visit.